Welcome back, you filthy exiles. So, uh, let's talk about Bone Shatter today. So, obviously, my league starter for this league is Bone Shatter. And I thought I'd do a video just to sort of break it down for anyone who is looking at playing Bone Shatter or is sort of stuck with Bone Shatter. This is my, I guess, first update. And apologies for being about a day late with putting this up. It's just traveling and whatnot. So, anyway, uh, basically where we're at, and I'll just bring up my, uh, my path of building on screen right now. Um... Overall, we've got like at 42 stacks um, of trauma, and we'll talk about that very shortly when I can figure out how to get to my configurations. At 42 stacks, we peak at like 2.6 million DPS currently, which is pretty good by day three. We have 108,000 effective hit pool and about 121,000 armor with everything up. And we'll talk about the mechanics of this build very shortly as we go through the POB, POB configs. Now, for any of the people that are out there delving at the moment, to give you an idea of where I'm currently at with this, um, as you would have seen in the B-roll, when Nico shows himself, uh, currently we're at a depth of 212. So, not too bad by day three. And I'm not finding any challenge at all at this stage. You should be able to drop Crystal Kings pretty easily. Um, yeah, it's pretty easy overall. Anyway, uh, let's talk about the build and how the mechanics work in uh, Bone Shatter to give you an idea of how you can get your build working or possibly where issues might be encountered in, you might be encountering issues in your build and this might give you an idea of what you need to fix uh, to fix the issues. Okay, so Bone Shatter has quite a few parts to it. It's a simple skill and basically the first iteration of Bone Shatter generally is number one, big axe and i'll do a video of how i crafted my axe because i did it on stream it's a piece of cake basically you want something with big dps now what i would recommend is getting a fractured base with attack speed and then basically just alteration slamming physical damage onto it as you can see 40 to 74 physical damage and then literally bench crafting flat physical damage ideally this isn't the best in slot that you can get but it's pretty damn good and it bloody well works the second big sort of thing that buffs up Bone Shatter is attack speed. And to get really good attack speed, Tanuahi Gloves are really good for this. Number one, because they give you flat 12% attack speed. The other thing they give you is free onslaught. And the other thing they give you is adrenaline. And this gives you a huge amount of attack speed. One of the things that you might be noticing is that your stacks when you're, when you're hitting away are not going up quickly enough. And this will be because your attack speed is lacking. So if you haven't got these gloves, chuck these gloves on your build. It'll improve the situation. The other thing that will enhance your ability to do stacks is Ancestral Protector Totems. So this is going to amp up your attack rate because the totems buff up your character. Um, allowing you to attack quicker, which is you know not just a damage increase, but allows you to put more trauma up. And then basically that allows you to hit faster. That's a couple of sources of attack speed that I have in my build, but I have others. The other is flask attack speed. So 13% increased attack speed during effect. And this is on my ruby flask that I run on my build to increase my defensives. Defenses? Um, so that's another element that you should look at at enhancing your attack speed to get that up further. Another way that I've also done it is obviously with close combat. So you get combat rush. This is an attack speed enhancement as well further. So this is going to, yep. So combat rush grants 20% more attack speed to Travis skills. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. Anyway, is what it is. Um, now, another way that I've gotten attack speed into the build is also Magnate. So my implicit, now this is not necessarily easy to get. This was 60 chaos. This build's very cheap as it is right now. So implicit 10% attack speed during flask effect, which is another way that I managed to get attack speed into my build. As you can see, there's a trend here. More attack speed is better. If you can get a bench craft on your axe, which is a suffix, um, and it will be a weapon suffix, and it'll be uh, increased attack speed while rare or unique enemy is nearby. This is going to increase your bossing damage because it means you can get your trauma stacks up. So with everything in, in accumulation right now, I'm pushing at about 42 stacks peak, like absolute peak, and I can sustain that. Now, the other thing you might be asking is, holy shit, like trauma, the more trauma you stack, how the hell do I survive that? There's a few different ways to get around that. So first of all, we're playing the jug. So the big thing that you need to get as your first ascendancy is untiring, unbreakable next, being that 8% of your armor applies to cold, uh, fire, cold, and lightning damage taken. And because trauma basically puts like physical damage back on you, 
this sort of mitigates a lot of damage if you've got the right rolls on your gear. Right now, I don't have the right rolls. You basically want to convert your physical damage to fire damage, and then basically you deal with your, uh, so you overcap your fire resistance, which is what I've done here. So you overcap that or go to as much max as you can, convert your physical damage back out, and then your armor applies back against your, um, your elemental damage. Uh, based on the unbreakable node and you basically just have like a loop of damage reduction to deal with physical dam damage inbound now overall to basically get the best result armor wise like i got 120,000 armor on my build um big ass plate chest plate sort of thing like i've got 1259 here in armor on top of this i've also got the implicit and this is just rolling our basic like uh exotic was it uh lesser eldritch ickers and lesser Eldritch Embers, and basically you can get Determination has increased aura effect, and these are just lessers, and up to 10% increased non-aura, uh, non-curse auras from your skills effect, that is. So that's going to enhance your effect of Determination. Um, some other things are 8% uh, cold damage taken as uh, as life, uh, recouped as life, and on my rings I also have damage, percentage damage taken, recouped as life as well. This enhances my defenses on the build. So that the more damage I take from trauma, the more I recycle that back into life regeneration, and then the stronger I get. And that also synergizes with untiring because 1.5% 1, 1. of physical damage is prevented from hits 10, uh, 10 seconds in the past 10 seconds and is regenerated as life per second. So the more damage that you can recycle into regeneration, that's basically why you see bone shatters like an arc generator of life. If you're hitting and impacting trauma on yourself, and then that cycles back to life regenerated, which is why it's such a strong build, more or less the case of how this build works. Now, the other thing, if you're dying to chaos damage, and we'll talk about this more in the gearing, uh, amethyst rings are your best friend, and I've also got fugitive boots on this build as well. Not the best in slot, obviously, but the chaos res is appreciated, and this helps massively in dealing with things like chaos damage, which right now with the, um, the new leak mechanic is really bad on the build. So that's another way that you can get around um, taking damage from that source. And the other thing I do to amp up my damage is I have an eternal struggle, and we'll talk about this more, and basically kill enemy. Uh, so this has a, a Searing Exarch Grand modifier, which is the, like the, the primary modifier here. And then basically that then allows for my kill enemies that have 15% or life lower. So it's basically free cull, which is, you know, for a, four to five to seven C item. Uh, this is really cheap, is excellent. Now, the other thing that you do as well to get more stacks of trauma is you need skill effect duration. In this case, I've really done this a basic way and just put exceptional performance on, which is dirt cheap. You can get that for nothing if you're doing any delving and you will be able to with this build. Um, and as far as the, um, the oils that you need to anoint it with. And then basically, yeah, that increases the skill effect duration, which allows you to stack more trauma with more attack speed buffed up by your ancestral protector again and then basically you get up to about 40 stacks now getting beyond that's going to be a bit more investment and that's going to be a future video down the track but right now this is working for me as you can see in the b-roll at the start or in the streams this build freaking slaps anyway and also we'll talk about tinctures soon too because tinctures are awesome there's going to be two trains of thoughts about what is better i think tinctures are great other people might be rolling with the um, the trinkets, trinkets, charms, charms, sorry, with the primalist. Um, but yeah, we'll talk about this soon. Anyway, anyway, let's get into the configuration, just do a bit of a bullshit check over the build, and uh, and hopefully this can tease out how the POB works. Okay, as always, I like to do the POB check, just so you guys know what's going on. All right, so, bandit quests, as always, get asked this question, kill everything, kill it all, it all dies. Uh, Sol Lunaris, Sol Tukahama, and this is mainly for the additional damage reduction while you're stationary. Now we have time spent uh, stationary as 5 seconds, because this build does rely on standing still. And the thing that we do have here is Nature's Patience, which allows us to have Grasping Vines. This is a big damage increase, and it's a big defense increase. And you are unaffected by this because of your ascendancy, because we have Unstoppable. We can't be slowed. We have no action speed slowdown, which basically means the vines that would normally slow you down don't slow you down. So if you haven't got this gem in your build, get it in your build. It's very important. Um, and then no other changes here. Frenzy charges. 
We get this from literally running Blood Rage, and we have that set on a cast when damage taken setup. So that's set up here, cast when damage taken, and that's on a life tap setup. We'll go through this with a gem setup. So that just casts as you get hit, and because you're always getting hit, it's always casting. Um, same with endurance charges. This is coming off the tree. So this comes off the in, inexorable node. So 25% chance to gain endurance charge when hit because you're always getting hit. You generate endurance charges constantly. Life tap, this is on everything, but it doesn't affect the DPS. Onslaught, this is coming from your Tanuahi gloves. So you get onslaught and adrenaline uh, when your leech is removed by filling up unreserved life. Um, and this is happening constantly as you're leeching. So you get both, so you're constantly cycling free onslaught and adrenaline. It's what makes these gloves absolutely amazing for melee builds that rely on that. Uh, fortified, so we literally just have a fortify gem in our setup, right? So fortify, not hard, pretty simple stuff. Okay, uh, rage, we have 55 rage and we generate rage from our nodes on the tree with actors. So because we use a two-handed axe, we have axe mastery here. Attacks with axes and swords grant one rage on hit no more than once every second. And we generate 55 rage because we get another five rage from this node up here called slaughter. So the base amount of rage that you have is 50 plus five, 55 rage. That's how we get that. That's pretty simple stuff. Um, flask active and leeching. Well, yeah, we're doing leech pretty much all the time. The leech is coming from a Tanuahi gloves because we do leech. 2.85% of physical damage is leashed as life. So that applies and it does buff up our damage. Blast active, we always have blast active. And in fact, the way that this build works, it makes it even more effective. Um, nearby enemies 10, because we're in Delve, we're always surrounded by enemies. That's the beauty of Delve. We're used to being surrounded. That's half the fun. Uh, have you killed recently? If you're in Delve, probably. It doesn't affect your damage either way. If you tick it on or off, as you can see. Have you been hit recently? Yeah, we're probably being hit recently. Now, trauma stacks, 42. This is absolute peak. Like, this is like going maxed out. If you're only getting a 28, you're only going to have two, 2 million DPS. So I'll put it to 28 for anyone who's like, you can't get to 42 stacks. Well, I do get to 42 stacks. But I'll put it to 28 just to appease those that might challenge that. Now I have nothing else ticked on here except for melee distance. So melee distance is quite important because of close combat. Um, close combat. So basically, yeah, the closer you are to enemies, the more damage you do. And actually, I'll also note Pulse does a slight increase of damage because Bone Shatter has like a free AoE effect that you get. Now, this is Guardian and Pinnacle boss damage. Basically, all there is to it, like that's the tree as it is. Go crazy. I haven't done anything weird or wacky. Uh, combat Rush is on, by the way, because we have close combat. But uh, yeah, anyway, that's the config. Nothing crazy, nothing weird. Uh, really simple stuff. Okay, gearing. All right, let's start with the helm. All right, I haven't upgraded my helm for a while. So this is actually a pretty crap helm. I got it as I got it out of the campaign, but it served me famously. So basically I have implicits on it, which need to be re-rolled and I'll do that. I basically just went for armor, uh, resistances to cap my reses and some life, but you can get way better than this. Um, and if you can get conversion to fire damage uh, on the helm, that's what you, uh, physical converted to fire damage, that's what you want because we overcap fire damage on this build. Um, now chest, I, I crafted this, so I bought a cheap six link, which was like, I think 20 or 30 chaos, and then just basically essence slammed it, um, until I got what I wanted. You can also do the same thing with abyssal fossils. Ideally you want chaos res on this at this stage and including your helm, if you can get chaos res on it, because we want to try and cap chaos res as best we can. Right now I have about 42% flat chaos res, so overcapped is better. Uh, if you can't quite get there, just try your best. Uh, rings, uh, we have amethyst rings here, so I could probably get another three chaos res on that with a blessed orb there. Uh, basically, chaos res as much as you can, damage taken, recouped as life and life, and any other attack stats that you can get on it, any other attributes, anything like that, get it, because that's basically your best in slot rings, at least for now. We're, eventually, we'll get rid of the max life and we'll do reduced mana cost, and that's going to basically mean that I don't have to run a reserve clarity aura, but it just is the breaks. The other ring I have is pretty much exactly the same, except with rarity and lightning res at the end of the day. Uh, amulet, eternal struggle. Now, the annoyance exceptional performances I noted at the start of the video, but just be very wary. You want to make sure that Exarch is the dominant role and you're going to have to have a look at the roles and you're going to have to do some research when you buy it. But these are really cheap. 
try and get percentage armor and global physical damage. If you just go off this, global physical damage, if you search that as the implicit, is an Exarch roll. Go for something that's a grand roll, and just anything under that, that for Eater of Worlds, is in, that's insignificant or less, that's going to mean you get free cull, because enemies that are 15% life or lower on hit um, all die. They get culled. Um, all right, so axe, basically six link, uh, red socket axe. The reason why you want red sockets in your axe is actually because your axe mastery here, not here, down here. All right, so 10% increased armor per red socket on your main hand weapon. We don't have evasion in this build because it's not a hybrid build. It's just a flat armor stack build. So basically five red sockets means... 10%, so 60% per, uh, sorry, six red sockets equals 60% increased armor just from having your axe all red socketed and six socketed. You don't have to six link this. You can just keep it like this if you want. It's not necessary to do anything else with this. Um, but yeah, basically you want a big Chungus axe and I'll actually do a video on this to explain and show you how you can easily craft an axe like this. It's really, really easy. And if you play an SSF, really obtainable. Um, basically just need a decent axe. That's it. Uh, that has a high item level, ideally 85, um, at best, but yeah, anyway, that's it. Um, gloves right now, ideally I want corrupted Tanuahi, um, but I don't have corrupted Tanuahi, but yeah, try and get 12% attack speed and as high rolls as you can. Um, and then basically you would want an implicit corrupted Tanuahi with attack speed or some other mod, um, or even vulnerability on hit, which will give you even more damage. Uh, but these are best in slot. Now, I have a magnate as my, be my belt. Big reason why 50% increased flask charge is gained, which basically means that my auto trigger flask just continually recharge constantly. Uh, and we'll go into the effect of having tinctures, which affects us further. But yeah, this is just a really, really good belt. Uh, it also gives you 10% chance to do double damage just because I don't have enough strength to meet the triple percent roll yet. Uh, boots. Literally, movement speed, all resistances, any life that you can get, just fill the gaps. That's basically it for the boots. Um, now, uh, I do have an Eternal Life Flask with Corrupted Blood. I do have Corrupted Blood in the build, or actually took it out, but in the POV that you've got, it will be in there. Um, but yeah, if you can get Corrupted Blood Life Flask, then you don't have to worry about Corrupted Blood, problem solved. Um, now, I do run a Ruby Flask. I have gain charges when hit by enemy, and I managed to get a 3, which is pretty good. And I got an attack speed roll, because why not? Beyond that, I've also got a Granite Flask with a 10% movement speed roll, because I don't use Quicksilver Flask, because I'm Giga Chad that way. Um, <laughs> but yeah, 3% charges when you're hit by an enemy, and to be honest with you, most of the time I'm Leaf Slamming anyway. Beyond that, I've also got a Basalt Flask, which is percentage increase armor by 42%, so... Not the best roll, but, you know, not too bad because I crafted it myself. Just gives you a shit ton of armor, which is what you need. Now, tinctures. I managed to find a tincture, which gives me 9% chance to create consecrated ground where you hit a rare or unique enemy, lasting 8 seconds. This basically means that you're an Inquisitor as a jug. It's OP as shit if you can find it. It's the green tinctures. Actually, no, that's just all poison. If you can find this roll, really good. The other thing I have on here, recover 18% of life on killing a rare or unique enemy. And this is really good in Delve because you're going to be doing this constantly. So, yeah. Um, now, if you didn't know about Tinctures, just quickly, they are on permanently. Free Aura. Most amazing thing ever, honestly. I'm sold with Tinctures. I wasn't, but it's pretty awesome. The other thing to note about the Tincture as well, it does have an effect on your flask charges. So I have coated coated blade, which allows me to use the tincture. But beyond this, nature's concoction, which goes flask adjacent to applied tincture, gain three charge when you're hit by an enemy with a weapon, no more than once every second. Flask adjacent to the tincture have 30% increased effect when used if you've been hit by an enemy uh, with a weapon recently. So when you take physical damage, your flask get jacked up and basically you can sustain. So if you're face tanking a boss, your flask just get juiced. This is further synergized by the magnate. Basically, it's free mage blood if you're getting hit by physical damage. Like that's what it feels like. You see the flask just go boop, boop, boop. And also have gain, gain charges, increased flask gain, and then three charges. So six charges 
uh, basically if I'm getting hit by a, a weapon with a 50% increase. Uh, so your flasks have, you know, a decent amount of charges. So basically, yeah, you, oh, sorry, they have 10 charges. So it's basically just regenerates almost instantly. Um, every single time you get hit, what, nine charges or some shit like that. Uh, so yeah, super OP. What it, what it basically means is, do you need a mage blood? Well, not really, because um, it acts very similarly to a mage blood. So, <laughs> it's a piece of cake. Anyway, uh, that's that's what I've got running in my gear setups currently. Okay, so gem setups. All right, in my axe, I've got ancestral war chief, protector, multiple totems, and life tap. I just like casting from life. It's easier right now because I don't have the um, minus two mana cost of skills on my rings. Um, in my helm, Ancestral Cry um, well, gives you an increased damage and you map this to your move button so you're always casting it and make sure you have a separate button in case you're standing still because otherwise then you have to hit the move button and that breaks your standing still which decreases your defense and damage. Uh, then I have Leap Slam, War Banner and Determination in my helm. In my chest, Bone Shatter. Now I have stock Bone Shatter. I haven't tested the other Bone Shatters because number one, they're not in POB and I'm not entirely sure. Uh, potentially another variant with trauma stack could work, but I don't know the answer to that yet. So when I get to that point, I will test it and let you guys know. Um, Impale, I've also got Ruthless, Brutality, I've got Close Combat, and I've got Fortify. Just the best combination for Bone Shadow Melee. In my gloves, Molten Shell, a Life Tap, Blood Rage, and Custom Damage Taken. And just max all these out uh, because we're going to be taking tons of damage anyway. In my boots, Precision, Arrogance, and Clarity. So at level 7, because I don't want to reserve too much life. This deals with any mana issues you might have in the build. And because it's so tanky, doesn't matter that the life pool is low. We have like 100 and, 121,000 armor or whatever it is. Like we stand still in one location. We've got like 63.8 thousand armor. And then, you know, it just goes up and up and up. So you don't need to worry about that. I also have Purity of Elements in this build. So, you know, just... It's fully ailment immune. It's pretty much fully max capped reses. Um, immune to being stunned. It's got all the best stuff. That's why it's a really strong build. But that's it for the skill setups. Okay, skill tree. All right, big one. All right. So, all right, we come down from the Marauder, um, the Marauder nodes or Marauder star point here. We come up, get Born to Fight. We get Versatility. We come down, we get Kinetic Impacts. We want to get 40% increased damage to with hits against rare or unique enemies. Uh, then we go to Prismatic Skin. Now, I like to come down initially and grab Tribal Fury first up. And then basically I'll grab Soul of Steel, grab the Int Node, and then basically work across, grab Bravery through to Art of the Gladiator, all the way down to Precise Technique. Um, then I come back down, I grab Champion of the Cause, Bannerman, this just buffs all your auras, 8% damage for each of your auras or herald skills affecting you. Now you could take this off and go 10% um, increased effect of your uh, aura skills on you. That's probably also a good sort of thing that you could do, but up to you if you want to do it or not. Uh, then I come across and get Hatchet Master uh, and then the Axe Mastery, so we generate Rage. Then I come across and get claim, uh, Cloth and Chain for more armor and more resistances. And then I also get uh, the armor mastery every four seconds regenerate life equal to one percent of armor evasion rating over one second uh, this is really good if you're in a boss fight and you're about to clutch die because this saves my ass pretty much all the time so i've got huge amounts of leech but i also have huge amounts of regeneration then i come down and grab wrecking ball two-handed mastery so 10 percent increased armor per red socket on main hand weapon um, we'll come back to clusters after. Then we come up and go out, grab Call to Arms, Bloodless, uh, skill cost, life and uh, life uh, of 30% of mana cost, uh, just to pan out my mana cost. Then we grab Inexonerable, and then we grab Armor Mastery, 1% of all maximum elemental resistances if equipped helmet uh, and body armor gloves and boots have, all have armor. Then we grab Juggernaut. We come up, grab the dual socket up here, barbarism, and then we want to grab slaughter first, cleaving, and then you also want for I, well, I opted for forty percent increased effective onslaught because we always have onslaught anyway. And then on our clusters, I just got a basic ass cluster with fuel the fight and martial prowess on an eight passive. I just have a crimson jewel in here for extra impale and attack speed, and then nature's presence as well, which is natural affinity small cluster. Now ascendancies because we have like a bajillion of those bastards now. 
First ascendancy uh, untiring, second ascendancy undeniable, then unbreakable, then unstoppable in that sequence. And then I also got Coated Blade and Nature's Concoction. I'm unsure of where I'll go with this at this stage. Um, I'll probably go down to like Wildwood Blessing um, and then basically Detect Evil. And then I'll have to come up with a way to deal with um, Bark Skin because it does reserve 25% of mana. And I can't do that. It'll probably mean just dropping Purity of Elements off, but we'll see how we go. And that'll increase my armor defensiveness as well even further. But yeah, that's basically it for the Ascendancies. And if you wanted to know Pantheons, uh, basically Soul Lunaris and Soul Tukama. That's all there is to it. Okay, so I hope this build helps you with your Bone Shadow build. I'm going to be continuing to progress this. I'm going to be basically trying to catch up to Mario, who's at like 500 to 550 depth and delve right now. This takes elements of his build tree. I readjusted it to my playstyle and how my build was feeling. This sort of feels good to me and I'm pushing down a Dell without any issues, clearing T16 maps, all of the which. But yeah, there's a thousand different ways to play Bone Shatter. This isn't a new build, like this isn't something I've uniquely put together. It's just slightly tailored for my playstyle. But yeah, if you want to give it a crack, uh, mimic what I've done in here, it should work exactly the same. But anyway, uh, check out the Discord. We've got a whole channel called The Bone Zone. Mario's got all these POBs and progress guides and everything up in there as well. But uh, yeah, until next time, uh, don't forget to like and sub to the channel. Don't forget to follow the Twitch and I'll, I'll see you guys later on. Have a good one.